So today I, was, I said I was going to tell you all about the ESP32 uh, chip and how it works with uh, WLED to create some of these kind of fun RGB effects with lighting. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to start right from the very beginning. So you buy these, typically they come in like a two or three. You can buy them individually. I got these from Amazon. Uh, the link's in the description below. Um, <coughs> they come, I bought these in three pack. Uh, this is basically what you get. You get three little boards that uh, look like that. They have a US micro USB or what is it? mini HD, it looks like a mini HDMI connector, but it's the old regular old um, USB connector. And that can be used for powering for some low voltage kind of situations. Um, a lot of the stuff I use, I use an external power supply, so I don't really use this too much. Um, however, for the project I'm going to use today, I am going to use this to power the board uh, and this is also going to be used to flash the board with the uh, WLED software that you need okay uh, so this is actually an ESP8266 board that's the actual unit we're going to be using uh, nothing too exciting um, anyway okay so that's that this lesson is branching out from my normal activities which is game streaming uh, but this is something I've had a passion for for a while now and it's uh, LED lighting RGB LED lighting ever since I bought my first gaming PC and put that together and loved how the the all the, the, the lights looked um, I decided to want to take it to the next level and actually make my office kind of a bit more uh, kind of in theme with my my gaming PC so I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos a shout out to some of the guys who helped um, and there's a channel that I'm, I'm particularly fond of by a guy by the name of Chris Mayer I think his name is uh, I'll leave a link to his channel down below in the description um, he's, his channel helped a great deal and really kind of what inspired me to go ahead and uh, follow in his footsteps and uh, create some really cool LED lighting so anyway the, the heart of the project um, with these LED lighting is is, is, is these uh, these chips uh, this one is a an ESP8266 the other one that you've probably heard of is the ESP32 um, but this is the one I'm going to be using. Uh, I got all these products, everything I got, I got from Amazon and I will say all the links for everything in this video are going to be down down below in the description. So uh, please feel free to go ahead and click through on those links to get the parts if you want to go ahead and try this. It's a fairly inexpensive project, but you can do some pretty amazing things with it. Um, the nice thing with this is though, you can kind of, this, can, this board can be used for all sorts of things, not just lighting effects. All depends on the software you're going to put on it. Now the software I'm going to be putting on this one is called WLED. It's a free install. Uh, once again, the link is going to be up either put it on the screen or down in the description below. And uh, it's, it's a super simple option to go ahead and flash these. Now I, I did when I first bought one of these chips, I had a, lot, a hard time getting it to flash. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple of different options you have for flashing these devices with WLED. And this is something that really hasn't been covered in too many tutorials. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll link, I'll put a link in the description down below as to the time code as well if you want to just jump to that particular section. But as I say, this is the ESP8266 board. Uh, it has a USB um, connector which provides power and also is used for flashing. Um, it is uh, it does have built-in Wi-Fi, which is nice. It's 802.11bg and n, operating on the 2.4 uh, gigahertz uh, bandwidth. Um, this here is the uh, if you can see it in the frame. That's the Wi-Fi antenna. On a couple of my projects, I did actually solder an extra wire on there to extend that just a little bit. Um, I don't really know if it really improved the distance of the Wi-Fi, but I can pretty much I can access all my devices from anywhere in the house. So. Uh, it's, it, it works pretty well. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. Uh, here's a real quick list of what you're going to need. 
Okay, I'm actually interrupting myself to give you a, an update on this build. There was a slight error in my parts list. The Wago connectors that you see there, they are not actually required for this build. So the only things you need are the uh, a 5 volt 2 amp USB power supply and the ones I have pictured there are the Samsung brand from a Samsung uh, Android phone. Uh, you need the breadboard jumpers to be able to go ahead and connect your ESP8266 or ESP32 to the LED strip. You need a micro USB data cable that's actually hand ca capable of charging a phone and also transmitting data and obviously you need the LED strip itself. Uh, you need some um, jumper cables, jumper leads, these are just basically 20 gauge uh, jumper pins. Um, they, they basically clip onto the pins of the chip like so and then you can go ahead and attach them to other things. And I'm going to be using some Wago clips, so I'll show you what those are in a minute. I don't happen to have one by the side of me. Um, but basically, you're going to take, you'll require probably like three of these uh, to get yourself up and running. Okay, and that's pretty much it, other than obviously the LED strips. Now, these are individually addressable LED strips. Um, the, each, each one you can program to a different color. Um, and the software is pretty clever that we're going to be using um, and it'll, it'll actually create, we can create multiple effects with these LED strips. Uh, you have a ground, you have the data in the middle and then you have the 5 volt. These are five, this is a 5 volt project by the way, not a 12 volt or a 24 volt, this is 5 volt. If you try and put any more than 5 volts through these LEDs or this particular chip, you, you're going to probably fry it, okay? Uh, so I'm not going to be held responsible for that. So you've been warned, but yes. Um, and one of these little things will probably power a pretty good brightness up to 140 uh, LEDs. This isn't to be used for large project projects like around the uh, ceiling kind of lighting, LED lighting. This is just for small, small runs. And the project I'm going to be doing only has uh, 22, uh, 22 LEDs. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so this is take number 65 or something crazy because somebody keeps interrupt interrupting me. Why the sad face? Um, I'm trying to do a how-to video on how to flash the ESP32 or uh, ESP8266 um, development board with WLED. There's a couple of ways of doing it. Um, one way was successful for me and not successful the other. I'm going to try the unsuccessful way to start off with because I want to show you how to do it or how I, I was able to figure it out in case it helped you guys. Uh, I am going to show you both ways or both methods of doing this in case you struggle with one. So this is the first one. Uh, first of all, you want to go to install.wled.me. Uh, this will take you to the uh, the main page where you'll find the software. Uh, once you've got to that page, you hook, it, hook up a regular micro USB cable. Uh, if your ESP32 chip, uh, or in my case, the uh, ESP8266 chip, um, has a micro USB connector. Uh, there are some of these that actually have a uh, USB-C uh, connector on them now, but this is the one. This is the one I prefer. Um, I've got a whole bunch of micro USB cables kicking around that will work for this project, and not so many USB Cs. Uh, that will probably change later on going down the line. But as of right now, um, all I have is micro USBs. So I've been buying these chips. Uh, as I say, links to everything is in the description down below. Um, this one is also Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, 802.11 B, G, and N uh, on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz, I think it is. Let's see what it says there. Yeah, 2.4 gigahertz range. Um, and what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and flash this chip. This is just a, the straight chip, is exactly how it came from Amazon. Um, I've got the uh, USB plugged into my PC, and I'm using a PC for this versus um, a Mac. Um, so, first thing you want to do, just plug it in both ends, it'll flash and you'll get the noise to say that it's connected. Okay, you want to make sure you also that you do have the drivers installed for this. Um, if you don't, you can actually go to WLED, the website, and actually it'll show you here which which uh, which driver you need uh, for whichever chip it is. I already have the driver installed, but if you were to click on this link, it would actually take you to the page where you can actually go ahead and download the, the drivers, okay? All right, so 
what I did to start off with, um, I just watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and figured that you just plug it in and then you click the install button on the version of software you want. Um, this is this this chip does not have Ethernet, um, so I'm not, I'm not checking that. Uh, you have different versions of WLED uh, to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and choose the most recent one. There is a sound reactive one, so if you decide to go ahead and get the ESP32 chip or uh, and, and add the microphone option to it, which you can actually solder a microphone, uh, and if you choose the sound reactive version, it basically allows you to have kind of cool sound reactive effects on your LED strips. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and choose the most recent one first of all. I'm not going to touch the chip, we're just going to go ahead and do what, it, what all the videos online typically show, which is click install. And this is what happens. So it, it detects that uh, it's got the chip installed, it's connected on COM3. I'm going to click that and click connect. It's going to connect. Serial port not ready. Close any of the application, try using it. So I, I keep getting errors, so I'm going to close this. I'm going to unplug it. Oops, unplug it, plug it back in again, try again, click on the install, COM3, connect, zero port not ready. Okay, so one of many issues I was getting while doing this. Oh, here we go. Okay, so try again, install WLED. Yes, I do. Install, preparing installation. Now, typically it hangs here and it won't do anything else. It'll just sit on this, this page, preparing installation for five, six minutes. Normally, this actually starts installing within five to 10 seconds, and you shouldn't really have this issue. So I, I can tell you right now, this is not installing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just disconnect this, unplug it, okay, okay. And it says here, try resetting your device while holding the boot boot button while checking the check while clicking install. Okay, so this is kind of how I got got it to install. Um, however, I didn't press the boot button. I actually used the reset button. All the videos I've I've found online show hold the boot button down and click install. I'm not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and click hold, click and hold the reset button down. Okay, so we just go ahead and refresh the page. Okay, so see if I can do this while. Doing a video. Okay, so there it is. It's installed there. And then, if you look on here, you got a flash button, which is typically the boot button, uh, and then you also have a reset button. So I'm going to hold that reset button down. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and click on install. It's found it. Still holding that button down. Click connect. Install. And then install. Still holding that button down. Still holding it down, and now I'm going to release it. And now, see, the, it, it's, it's erasing, and it's going to start flashing it here in a second. And for some reason, my, my it's, it's messing with my camera, but okay, not to worry. Here we go. So it is actually uh, f flashing now. It is actually flashing the software to it. When it finishes, the little LED, blue LED on this particular one, should actually light up solid blue. And it basically means the software has been successfully installed and it should be ready to go. Um, this is one way of doing it. So I'm gonna, after, after this is done, I'm going to go ahead and show you the other way of uh, flashing and installing. If, you go, if, if, if for some reason you're holding that button down and it doesn't go ahead and uh, flash the software, there is an, another another method. Just give it a few seconds. It normally doesn't take too long. And just um, while we're waiting for that to do that, a couple of other things I mentioned earlier. Uh, we are going to be using breadboard jumpers, which uh, make it a lot easier. Okay, so I got this error message the last time, but as you can see, the LED light is actually on. So it is actually working, um, and that tells me that the software is on there. So I can now actually unplug this, and I'm good to go. Okay, so that's one chip done. All right, so now we're going to reflash this chip. Uh, click close. Uh, okay. Okay, we're not going to use WLED to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to close that out. 
And we're actually now going to go ahead and open up the, uh, the software, um, the other software. So there's something called Node MCU, uh, which is a, an application to go ahead and flash the uh, flash it a different way. Okay, with the binary. So Node MCU is the uh, is the software. And this is basically what it looks like. Okay, so I don't think I can make any larger than that. All right. So basically, what we're going to do, we are going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go ahead and uh, plug in the development board. Okay. And we are actually going to go ahead and select the serial serial port. It should Click reload, and then here it is, COM3. Gonna leave everything the same. Uh, 115200 is the board rate, which is basically the communication speed which the uh, chip communicates with the software. Uh, flash mode is going to be dual I/O. All right, so we're going to select COM3. Leave everything else the same. Erase flash. Yeah, we're going to do a yes erase flash and all data. And then it's up, up here it's asking for the Node MCU firmware. Okay, so the firmware in this instance, I'm going to use the only firmware I have as a binary is uh, third, it's WLED version 0 0.13.1. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Browse for, no, browse for that. And here it is. Okay, and then we're just going to go ahead and hit flash node MCU. I'm not going to touch anything else on the on the unit. And as you see, it's it's taking care of it right away. It's going to erase the flat, erase the build. It won't take that long actually because obviously it's a very small file. And then once it's done erasing, it'll start it'll start the install. There we go. Already writing the the firmware. So this is the secondary way of doing it. Um, so if the install WLED does not work uh, from their website, then you can actually go ahead and download this software. And there's there is links to it on GitHub. I think you can find it on GitHub. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll try and leave a link to it down in the description below, um, and a link to the binary. Because as I say a lot of other people haven't left those links in there. Uh, if they have, they just don't seem to work for whatever reason. Uh, but I'll put links down in the description below for you to be able to go ahead and do that. Okay, so once this is updated, uh, it is this is actually, bear in mind, an older version of WLED. Um, I don't have the most up-to-date one, but it still works, uh, and it's still a really good uh, piece of software. Okay, so f successfully finished. Um, okay, so unplug, and plug back in again. That blue light should come on. There you go. Okay, so it tells me this is uh, working fine now. It, it has the uh, WLED 13.1 software on there. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is hooking up the LED strips and looking at the software itself. All right. Okay. So moving on from the previous part, what I'm going to show you now is now we flashed the the chip, the development board, we're going to go ahead and connect that to our LEDs. Uh, I'm going to show you the no option, uh, which is really straightforward, super simple, um, and is probably the cheapest way of doing it, and the easiest way, especially if you don't have a, a soldering iron or anything like that. Sorry. <laughs> my co-star, my, my famous co-star who's got thousands of views on, on YouTube, unlike myself. Yes, I know. Don't rub it in. Okay, so, <laughs> of course, it always happens. So basically, when you get your LED strips, they're going to come on a roll like this, okay? And they're going to come in a packet like this. These are the B 
BTF uh, strips, and these are the eco version. I'm not too sure what the difference is between the eco version and the regular version, but the, I say the eco version is this one I'm using right now. Um, I, it's the first time I've used these. I use these on a, on a, a the project behind me in the in the cabinets there, uh, and they look really nice. They work really well. They're bright enough. Uh, I have had not I have not had any issues with them. So I'm, I've got a few left over, so I'm going to use those as an example. Okay. So what we're going to first of all, I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how they normally arrive. When they come, they normally have um, a connector like this on one end, so a female connector, and that connects there like so. And they have a male connector which connects on the other end. And that, sorry, a female connector. Yeah, male connector on that end, female connector on this end. Female connector on the input side, male on the out. That way, if you get another strip, you can just basically plug it in, hook it up, and you don't have to do any wiring. It's already done for you. Okay, so I personally, I don't really like these. Okay, they're okay for temporary projects or for quick, quick demos, but I prefer to solder everything. So for the for the sake of time, I'm not going to go ahead and solder um, all these on here. I'm just going to use some quick connect clip connectors that I, I got from Amazon. Um, I'll link in the description below. Uh, you get a pack of 20 of these. And basically, they've got little metal uh, pin spikes on them on the inside, so you, they basically clamp on the the pins there, and then you can punch, push in wires and clamp them down. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So, basically, what we'll do is make one. But first of all, you want to make sure that your data is going in the right direction. So as you can see there, the arrow is pointing that way. So that's the way we want it to go. Okay. So we're going to push this in here. I'll push it up to about, about there, then clamp it shut. Okay. And that feels pretty solid. Okay. Give it a bit of a tug, make sure it's, it's connected. Okay. Next, we need some wire. So what I was going to use, I was going to use these breadboard jumpers. Now, these breadboard jumpers are actually really good um, if you've got the strip in its original state without the ends cut off, because what you can do is the little pins on these breadboard jumpers, you can see that there, actually uh, fit right in to the, uh, the female port of these. So you can just basically push that in there. And you can do it with each each one of them. Sorry about my YouTube famous dog in the background. Okay, so that's the in an ideal world. That's the best, great way of doing it if you want to do a quick fix. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So basically, it's a good way. These are a great way of doing it completely 100% solder free. Okay. And because th this end goes basically into the chip, this end goes into your LED strips and uh, you're good to go. So anyway, we're going to kind of do a little bit of shortcut. I'm going to chop the ends off these. We're just going to pretend that we plug them directly into the, to this. So quick, quick and simple. Okay. Now I wouldn't necessarily recommend using these, these wires for long runs. For this project, there's probably not very many LEDs on there, probably about 50, 40 or 50. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about melting the cables or anything, because we're not pumping large amounts of current through it. Um, so anyway, so let's go ahead, and that, that is one thing you do have to be concerned about if you're using 12 volt uh, runs. This is a 5 volt setup, um, so it, it, we, we should be okay. Um, but uh, on longer runs, you have to do something called power injection, and I'll explain that in another video uh, if I ever get around to doing it. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to push this into the the five volt socket. We're going to push this into the let's call this one the, the earth or the ground, and then we're going to call the blue the data. So it goes in there like so. All right. Then what we do is we just close this up, give them a bit of a tug. And it just basically snap shut and it will click into place. So now this is technically like this, having this on there, okay? Alright, so now what we do, we take the chip and we have to know what the pins are to use. So there are three pins that we need to utilize because we've got three wires. We, we, we want to utilize the ground pin, we only use the voltage pin, and we only use the data pin. So if you look carefully, uh, we have, let me see, use something to point with. 
Okay, so the pin on the end here, that should be called the VIN, V-I-N, voltage, V for voltage, okay? So that's the one you want to click, hook up the, the positive wire to from your LED strip. The next one over is the GND, or ground, and that's the one you want to hook up your ground to, okay? Then the, one, the other one that's important is the uh, D4 on this particular chip, and it, it can vary from chip to chip, but uh, with the ESP32 and the ESP8266s, uh, it's the D4 pin, which is the fifth pin in on the other side. And that's the one that outputs the data from WLED to the actual light strip and tells each LED what color or what to do. So, what we're going to do is, because we used these breadboard jumpers, they've got these handy dandy little sockets on them, we can just slide these sockets over the, over the pins. So, Blue obviously was what we used for data, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up the data to the D4 pin. Okay, just slide that on there like so. That's now on the D4. Okay, now we want to go ahead and hook up the positive of the voltage. So the voltage was the burgundy one, the burgundy red looking one. That was the, the first pin there. And the ground was the very next pin to it. So one there. Okay, so now we have our LED strip hooked up to our LED controller, or our uh, microcontroller. Now all we need to do is add the, uh, add the voltage. So to go ahead and do that, we need to go ahead and take the micro USB cable and plug it in. And let's see what happens. All right, it's great. So we have, we have light. Now as you'll notice, uh, I'm not too sure how many have lit up, but not all of them have lit up. And that's basically because WLED has to be programmed to know exactly how many LEDs are actually on the strip that you want to power. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and head over to the WLED software and take a look at that. Okay, so once you plug the uh, development board back in, it'll turn on. And then what you'll want to do is go down to your uh, Wi-Fi settings on your computer or even your, your phone if you've got an Android or Apple phone and connect. There'll be a, um, a Wi-Fi network that's been created called WLED-AP. Uh, um, and what you want to do is you want to connect to that. It'll ask you for a password and the password is down below. It's uh, lowercase WLED1234. Once you click that, it'll actually go ahead and open up uh, the uh, web page here. If it doesn't, go to a browser and type in the IP address 4.3.2.1 and that'll bring you to the, uh, the the online version of the installer. If you're doing it, sorry, the, of the, the app, if you're doing it on your phone, all you do is click, if, I know if you do it on an Android phone, you click on the, the Wi-Fi network, it'll ask you to sign in, you put in the, the uh, WLED1234 and then press join and it, will, it automatically brings up this page. Okay, There is actually an app for your phone as well that is available from the Play Store and also the Apple Store and uh, I'll, 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 I'll show links down that in the description below. Um, but for the time being what we want to do is we're setting up this LED strip. So as you can see some of the LEDs are lit, some of them are not and that's basically because we've got to tell the controller and the software how many LEDs are on the strip. So that's the, one of the first things we want to do. So you want to go to, uh, we're just going to go to the controls for the time being, we're not going to go to the uh, Wi-Fi settings. Um, in fact, yeah, let's, let's do that. So go to controls and then you want to go to config and we want to go to LED preferences. Okay, so it automatically detects how, what, what, what your power supply is. So we've got a 2 amp 5 volt power supply which is basically a regular phone charger. Uh, an automatic brightness limiter is enabled which is fine. Uh, it tells you here to keep it lower than 1 amp if powering directly from the, 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 the actual board itself. Any more than that you can fry the board which I actually did unfortunately. Okay so what we want to do is scroll down and right here under the first section which is LED, LED outputs. Um, you want to make sure first of all that, well We'll look at this in a minute, but the color order is important. This tells the data pin um, what type of LEDs you have uh, hooked up. So if for some reason you select red as a color in the 
the config and the output's green, then you know there's an, an issue in here and you'd have to change one of these. Uh, the, the the actual chip, the, the lighting strips, the WS2812Bs, typically all use GRB profile, okay? Okay, so next. Next is the length of the LEDs. Right now we've told it that it's 30 uh, LEDs long. Uh, and obviously I know we've got more than 30, but I'm not too sure exactly how many we have. I would say it's probably a, maybe a 80 to uh, 50, maybe eh, probably more than that. Okay, well let's go ahead and just type in 50 for example's sake. Okay, I'm going to type in 50. And I'm going to scroll all the way down. There's a lot of other settings in here as well, which we won't get to right now. And I'm going to hit save. And then notice how all these extra LEDs lit up. So that's basically what you want to do first of all. You want to tell it how many LEDs are on your strip. Okay, and I've got one strip on my ceiling, which I think has close to 900 LEDs. So you can plug in any number. Okay. Obviously, if you're using 900 LEDs, you're going to have to do some kind of power injection. Because one thing you will notice if you try and use a small power supply with a lot of LEDs, it'll be bright towards the beginning, and it'll kind of get dim, dimmer and dimmer the further out you get. Okay. Because it's trying to draw too much current, and it just can't, it can't get enough current. Okay, or voltage. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back, uh, and we are going to do let's do Wi-Fi settings. So we will do let's go ahead and set it up for the wireless network. So uh, what you want to do is you, in here you type in your network name and your network password. Once you've done that, you'll go ahead and hit save, and what it'll do it'll disconnect, and then you'll reconnect, replug it back in again, and what it should do is connect to your home Wi-Fi. That way you can use the app on your phone without having to sign in to the uh, WLED-AP uh, directly to the actual chip every time. You don't have to go ahead and put it on your home network, but honestly it's nice if you've got multiple um, WLED drivers, uh, if you've got lots of different LED sets, uh, you can actually group them all together within the app. Okay. So anyway, we're not, I'm, not, I'm not actually going to go ahead and do the, the Wi-Fi in here, but let's go back, and we're going to go to the controls. So in here, this is the 13.1 uh, controls. The, the newer version actually does have uh, slightly, different, slightly different options and a few extra different effects. So here we have the standard colors, so it's on kind of default. You can change it to red, change to blue, teal, green, white. White, by the way, is the most, draws the most current. Okay, so uh, just remember that. You, need, you may need more power uh, injection points on longer runs if you're using a lot of bright white. Okay, uh, going back to blue. And down here you've got different, uh, different color patterns. Now these patterns typically only work, it's kind of a weird way that I learned, but you basically have to go into effects, click blink, go back to colors, select black, and then all these different options should be available to you. So like beach, breeze, and these are static. These are kind of static colors, fire, so it's kind of gradients, which is kind of cool. Halt, which is one of my favorites, ice fire, magenta red, orange and teal, and you can kind of see how it's kind of more of a teal here and more of an orange here. Okay, and then if you didn't want to do static effects, you can do uh, animated effects, and these are the really cool ones. So uh, basically I just go back to, yeah, that'll be fine. Take it off blink and just do solid. And then what we want to do is let's just go ahead and do a candy game. So yeah, so you can see all sorts of different um, options, colors. All kinds of really kind of different awesome looking effects. Uh, fire flicker. Okay, start with fire, fireworks is kind of one of the, it's a fun one. Now, I use all these with diffusers, um, and it basically makes it a lot, look a lot nicer. So as you can see, kind of over there, that light stand that I've got, it's difficult to kind of see in this uh, 
Let me get closer. Uh, it's difficult to see in this light, but yeah. But basically, the diffuser makes you because you can't see the individual LEDs, and it kind of makes it diffuse a little bit nicer. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, and what you what you do with these LEDs is entirely up to you. The world is your oyster. Um, I actually took the time and I've printed um, little housings for these. So here's that's one. This is one that I'm currently working on. The USB 32 chip is in here. Uh, it's got plug. You plug the USB in there, and it comes straight down to the cable here. And this is going to be for a desktop accent light that I'm working on right now. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. I say that one's this one's hooked up to my Wi-Fi. Just just plug it in with a, a phone charger, and it works great. All right. Well, that's basically it. Um, you've, I've shown you both. I've shown you both methods of flashing your uh, CPUs, uh, your CPUs, your chips. Um, you've seen how to connect it. Uh, super simple, very easy, very straightforward. If you have any questions, um, please do feel free to reach out in the comment section below. Um, as I say I'm not a major YouTuber, so I don't have a, a massive following. So I do see the comments, not that I get very many on my other videos, but um, if you have any questions on this, uh, please I'll keep an eye out and do reach out. Uh, so I've, I've been through this kind of recently, so I've, I've kind of had an idea of what I know, I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the other projects that I'm working on when I, when, I get, when, I get, when I get done with them. But anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Once again, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, do feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell icon for uh, notifications of new videos. Um, and if I think of anything else, I will add it to the notes section below. But yeah, all the all the parts that you see in this project are actually in the notes section down below. Um, one, a couple of other handy tools that I use uh, that I find really useful when when creating these things. I say these these Wago clips. Um, these are kind of handy. If you needed to join multiple wires together, you can just basically plug one in one end and you just clamp them down. No solder required. And these breadboard jumpers, the the male ends that would I, I kind of cut off and put in here. They plug in to those as well, really easily, uh, and pretty securely, believe it or not. So those are always those are always useful. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you real quick is these. Um, if you have multiple strips you want to join together, and you don't want to feel like soldering them, you can actually buy these little clips, and they basically allow you to clip multiple sections together. And this particular pack also came with um, some little. Uh, like right angle pieces to be able to go say for example you wanted to put on the back of a tv uh, and that's one way of making a right angle turn with an led strip otherwise you're going to be folding it so use that in conjunction with these and you don't have a problem a problem at all but uh all right well thanks for watching i appreciate it uh, you guys have a great day and uh stay tuned for more videos thanks now take it easy bye all the products used in today's video are linked in the description below via affiliate links. Uh, they link back to Amazon. Um, at the time, I, as I, the time I did this video, which is September the 9th, everything was in stock um, and everything was current. So if you click on the link and it's not working, please let me know and I'll see if I can find the uh, comparable, comparable item. Thank you.